Hello there, and welcome to Women's Business. My name is Dr. Mary Michelle Cross Smith, known to most as Dr. Daycare, and this is my co-host, Amy Vogel. We'd like to welcome you to our mentoring program designed to educate our community on issues facing working women. We will be speaking to our guests in the areas of art, sciences, health, education, law, medicine, politics, community service, military, and business. The goal of the show is to provide information that comes only from personal experience and to pass this information down to our daughters, nieces, neighbors, family, and friends. Much of the content will relate to the guest speaker's journey in their profession what they have learned most about this process, and what they wished they had known before this journey began. Since women-owned businesses are the fastest growing sector of our economy, my guests will close with what lesson they would like to pass on to the viewing audience. Hello there, and thank you for joining us on Women's Business. We are honored to welcome Erin Conley and Washan Jones from the Times Square Institute. Welcome. Welcome thank you. Thank you for to Women's us. Business. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about the Times Square Institute. So <clears throat> we are a, one entity under a larger umbrella, which is called Times Squared Inc. Um, it's a charter organization out of Providence, Rhode Island. And we specifically focus on sharing best practice and building teacher educa uh, educator capacity. Um, specifically, we focus on professional development, curriculum programming um, for learners of all ages. And we're really trying to work on workforce development and that yeah. building 21st century skills within our students and getting these students ready for the workforce of tomorrow, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So right now we have a shortage of employees. I'm sure you hear this often with where you work. So are you trying to train people that maybe necessarily weren't in education field and try to cross them into that field? Do you Not necessarily education, okay. but one example that we are working on with adult learners is the IT field. So that mm -hmm. there's a really great need mm -hmm. for the IT um, workers, especially like support desks, um, and managerial staff. So realizing that that's a very in-demand position, we were, have been working with some local companies to build certifications so that we can get the the uh, learners in and fill those gaps quicker than if they had to go through university um, because of the high in the high demand. The de honestly, even because we oversee childcare centers, sometimes we have rooms not open because we don't have enough employees and teachers oh. in those rooms. And I hear manufacturing, IT. Yes. So it's great that there's a program out there that streamlines the process to make it quicker than going to a traditional college or university <clears throat> where it could take a lo long time because you kind of need someone in the seat right then. Absolutely. Not six months from right then. So mm -hmm. that's, that's wonderful. So how do you hire the people to train these people in those levels of experts in whether it's IT or science, like who trains them all? Great question. So depending on the niche or the focus of the program, mm -hmm. um, my I personally um, have a plethora of experience in building curriculum and programming mm -hmm. and education. So I do a lot of the K-12 programming and curriculum. I have a specialized um, IT person who builds our IT curriculum for the mm -hmm. adult learners. And I also have a few science and math coaches um, that also can pick up the ball and do boots on the ground deployment of the programming. That's amazing. And you also had mentioned the STEM program. Correct. Is, yeah, yeah, really. STEAM. It's, what? A lot of people yeah. say STEAM now. You're right. Arts. STEAM, absolutely. <laughs> the arts, absolutely. I mean, it took a long time to get but STEM. Yes, right. Like, why don't we think of that 40 years ago? It right. just sums it up. And then they add STEAM, which is, even sounds better. Yes. Yeah, really. Well, it's amazing. interesting you say that because our name, Times Squared, it actually is an acronym because we were created almost 40 years ago. In the 40 acronym, years? 40 yeah. years ago before the term STEAM was invented. So our, our name actually stands for, and please correct me if I'm wrong, to improve mathematics, engineering, and science really? studies. Yep. Okay. That's oh, amazing. wow. So 40. our name actually predates the STEM Predates acronym. it does, yeah. That's you amazing. had a vision and a mission back then. Mm -hmm. Yes, really. well, and that's, that's the ink. Yeah, right. yeah, I know so, I get yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. the institutes, we're going on our, we're in our second year, mm -hmm. so we're relatively new, um, and we're actually we're a startup. So, mm -hmm. um, with the, under the larger umbrella. Mm -hmm. So, but they saw a need. Yes, yes they saw absolutely. that there wasn't enough employees 
that were trained well enough to do these jobs. So that's amazing that they've started this. Yeah. It gives people opportunities that they might never never had before. Is that also from the Workforce Development Grant too? Oh, we are working very closely actually with it's RIDE and the Governor's Workforce it. Board yeah. Um, yeah. with a couple of our programs. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. So um, we have another program called XGen, which is specifically targeting oh, educators. Okay. And it's a very intensive year-long program where teachers actually spend a period of time in industry. So for instance, um, one of our science teachers um, does a lot with energy. And so mm -hmm. she spent a week in solar with Newport Solar. Oh, wow. And learned all about the solar energy, and she's bringing that and creating a, a unit for her students where they actually investigate and will be proposing the best option for solar panels for their school to help offset their energy costs. I love costs. that industry education collaboration. Yes. I think that's so important. <clears throat> Get the experience that the student will have outside the classroom and have the teacher teach it that way so they get the full circle of what it's about. I think that's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, it's really yeah, yeah. about the relevant contextualized learning and the authenticity. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you're very advanced in that, that concept. As a former school committee person, 30 some years ago, they were talking about it, talking about it. And what is better than getting the student and all the teachers into understanding the business end of it? Right. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, it's just, and we all go to college and uh, we got families and everything else happening in our lives. So we get in that, we get in that tunnel thing, we get into a class and become a teacher. It's really going out there in the business that right. the students are going to be going out to. So for Absolutely. your teachers to get out there and see that piece, it's just it, they realize, oh my God, we're starting at 8 o'clock and it's 8.10 and no one's here yet type of thing, you know, mm -hmm. where they know when they had to be right there for the students at 8 o'clock. So to teach the business end of it, I think it's absolutely amazing. Absolutely. I didn't realize they were doing that. And it's really interesting because the workforce is so different today oh, no than do. when most of us probably went into teaching. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so absolutely. to understand yes. yeah. what skills are utilized mm -hmm. and, you know, the concepts that yeah. are needed. I've often, and it's just like a dream of mine, and um, I've often thinking of the businessman who retires, and some people can retire between 50 and up, so mm -hmm. it certainly has changed, to get them and have all their experience and get them to become teachers mm -hmm. in the classroom. But just because they know this stuff, they know their business, they know that, but then get educators in there to support the classroom. Mm -hmm. So he or she's up there teaching their subject when they can do some pretty good math. And then you have an educator in the classroom taking care yeah. of the behavioral problems, taking care of the kids who are gazing on their phones mm -hmm. and also kids who just need that advanced help. To me, that would be the ultimate mission of, of right. our business. Yeah, the collaboration is right. really the essential. Collaboration is mm -hmm. so, but it's got to happen. It's really mm -hmm. got to happen. And it sounds like it's happening in your, in your, your business, but sometimes it's just that we talk a lot, but I don't find it sometimes happening. Mm -hmm. That's great yeah. to know it's happening. One of the big challenges we face is that um, a lot of industry embraces students and wants students to come into their mm -hmm. workplace, yes. which is great, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times we find that when you have the teacher that's out in industry, the impact is greater because as, as opposed to being one student, Training it's one trainer. teacher who's teaching 20 to 30 mm -hmm. students every year, so it has a right. greater impact to have the teacher have that experience. Now, yeah. <laughs> is it normally just a week at a different organization or could it be a longer amount of time that the teacher is involved in, t in the industry itself? That's a great question. So we actually just had a meeting yesterday with um, the Governor's Workforce Board, Skills for Our Eye and, and RIDE mm -hmm. um, around that. So mm -hmm. the model we have deployed this year was a week, um, only because the teachers yeah. feel they can't give up any more time. time However, mm -hmm. and, it, and it worked, yeah. but we are going to try a longer, more in-depth period because we feel they'll get a greater understanding mm -hmm. of the industry with a longer period of time. So now that we have the state on board, um, That's it'll, wonderful. It, it's going to really be... It's kind of like a sabbatical helpful. for a professor. Yes, right. exactly. So if you, yeah, good way uh, look exactly. at that. Exactly. If you're a political science professor, but you concentrate on... Um, Middle Eastern politics and the way it works, and they go to the Middle East and they right. form, the, they bring that back to the classroom. Yes, if they can say, when I was there, this is what happened, and you're not just reading about it in the book. They can give those experiences, real life experience. Yes. So they could yeah. maybe model it similar to that. I know there's different funding and whatnot that you have to work yeah. on because absolutely, and that's the whole premise of the experiential learning being the root for the teacher. Because mm -hmm. then, too, when they can come back and create these authentic, simulated. Um, experiences for mm -hmm. the students in the classroom 
and build that partnership because what we're also finding is like Newport Solar is coming in and working with the kids on oh, yeah. site of the school so that That's that wonderful. collaboration mm -hmm. does build because there's that relationship now mm -hmm. um, but so those two components the teacher can draw on her experience not only to plan mm -hmm. but to when the t when they, she sees the kids frustrated she's gonna understand Oh, I was frustrated yeah. at this point too mm -hmm. and yep. have that oh, yeah. empathy yep. as well I think this is a great model. I really wish it was around when I was in high school. Yeah, really. <laughs> I, I think it kind of went in and out, and you know, everyone get, comes up with all the um, hurdles. No transportation. Right. I'm done with no money. Right. <laughs> yep. There is money for things people want money for, and, and Very really, true. we need, and, and we really need a workforce environment. We truly need it, and teachers need to be able to see all those aspects as well as the students. So that's nice. Some that's happening right here in Rhode Island. Fantastic. <laughs> it's a great mission. So how did you get involved in education? Was this always your career path, or did it kind of swerve and whirve and curve, and then but, you're here? <laughs> yeah, so that's also, I love that question, because it actually leads, I'm going to connect what we're talking about kind of to my personal experience. So my mom was a teacher, my grandmother was a teacher, and my oh, dad was an engineer. So I actually oh, went to college as an engineer and came out a teacher. <laughs> um, it's like, hi, perfect time for grandma yes. <laughs> And now I blend them with my STEM yes. background. That's great. Um, so... That being said, a lot of the X-Gen program is built upon that. So our career aspirations are really built on what we've been exposed to. Mm -hmm. So ironically, I was exposed to teachers and engineers, and those were the two career paths I saw for myself. Mm -hmm. And that's the idea of X-Gen. If we can get kids exposed to professions as early as kindergarten through eighth grade, by the time we say to them in ninth or tenth grade, where would you like to intern? Mm -hmm. Or we ask them in college, what do you want to major in? No one's going to look at you blankly mm -hmm. or spin this roulette wheel thinking, yes. oh, I don't know, my mom was a teacher, my dad was yeah. an engineer. They can truly say, I remember my second grade unit on structural engineering mm -hmm. or my eighth right. grade unit on, new, you know, with solar energy. I think I'd like to spend more time in that field. Mm -hmm. And so there's this more educated process and decision making around your career path. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully it will address the students as well in the midst, in the midst you know, of so that. I literally <laughs> went to college my first year and my mom said, what do you want to do? I go, I don't know. So I did liberal arts. I eventually yep. did political science and economics, but... Great, great degrees are knocking it, but it was not career driven. Right. Mm -hmm. It was, it is, I loved it, I enjoyed it, but I wish at a younger age, as you were saying, I was exposed to more, more to get more of an idea, maybe my sophomore, junior of high school, of what do I really want to do? Mm -hmm. But all you were exposed to then was English, math, so the traditional mm -hmm. way of teaching. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I like government, I like math, let's try this. But right. yep. and long then term, it wasn't the best. Not a bad degree, but it wasn't the best degree. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's not focused enough often. Mm -hmm. and, and oftentimes, you know, you know you like government, but you don't really know what the, the profession yeah. mm -hmm. looks like, feels like right. when it's applied. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's also important. Mm -hmm. That's why I try and tell a lot of the teenagers, and it's a hard sell, too, to get out there and volunteer. Just oh, volunteer. Yes. And it's like the mindset is, I'm not going to get paid, I'm not going to volunteer. But I'm like, you don't realize this is going to go so forward to your education. Mm -hmm. Find a business you can volunteer in one afternoon a week just to get a sense of it's something you like. And and sometimes I tell most of the teenagers I when I go to the schools and speak in high school, is that actually becomes a job because, well, in a child care pro profession, the person volunteers, they come in, you get to know what they're like, they show up, they're engaged in the children. I go, most of the time your volunteer job will become your uh, job or a profession for you in the future. You know what right. I'm saying? But it's a hard, it's a hard it's concept a, it's to sell. Hard. And people know? have a hard time getting out of those built-in careers that we already yes. know about. Yes. I just had this conversation this weekend with a friend who has a teenage daughter mm -hmm. who wants to be a pediatrician, which is something that we all know. We've all had a pediatrician. Mm -hmm. yep. So it's an easy career yes. to to arrive upon, um, but she really has most of her, her real interests are in computer science. So, wow. so now that I work for Times Square, I kind of told her some of the things that we're doing for students in our organization to show them that you don't have to just be a lawyer, doctor, policeman, well, that, fire. Exactly. I think because I was on the lawyer track, I eventually got my MBA, but you get like tracked. You just right. track yourself Absolutely. on what you know from the, in, the, the norms. Right. <laughs> Teacher, lawyer, yeah. doctor. Like I don't, engineering was around. Was, <coughs> right. Like it's just, yeah. you get. It's amazing. Yeah. I feel like you lose so much opportunity because you weren't exposed to it enough. Right. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. also the time factor, too. So, Evan, <clears throat> we talked before the, um, the show began about education as it relates to curriculum. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm fascinated by curriculum. I truly have always been. From K to 8, tell me what you, what you really find is, I mean, it's always changing. We all mm -hmm. know that. It's around the steam totally. But give me some ideas to the, to the um, viewing audience, what you think is a really good a curriculum for children, let's just say K to three type of thing. Let's stick with early childhood, that's my back. <laughs> <laughs> so again, I'm 
really passionate about the the whole child. So yes, curriculum absolutely, yeah. addressing the whole child and I'm going to go back to something we talked about earlier too about the universal yeah. curriculum. So the universal curriculum, the idea that everyone is you deploy the same curriculum so you can ensure the students all over the state mm -hmm. or country, mm -hmm. if you go larger, yeah. have the yeah. same experiences, um, definitely has some positives because you're ensuring that there's some equity in terms of what they're exposed to. Yeah. However, students are very different and they have very different needs, both geographically, yeah. mm -hmm. individually. So that, that's where the universal curriculum will kind of fall flat. Yeah. Um, so developing curriculum for the specific group of students that you have, let's say geographically. Mm -hmm. So for science, science just transitioned to NGSS, yeah. the new science standards. Um, to blanket sell a curriculum across the country, we have a very different, because experience, to answer your question right up front, experience yeah, is experience. key. Experience, okay. So giving kids that, that hands-on, true, authentic experience um, while they're learning, I also am very passionate about being inquiry-based. So mm -hmm. student-driven, student-centered. Oh, um, yeah. Driven through inquiry. So that being said, you know our science curriculum in Rhode Island they should be learning these standards through what we have around us. So mm -hmm. for instance, we're on the water. Yes. Use the marine habitats. Use our what the kids can relate to mm -hmm. um, and change, because mm -hmm. being agents of change is huge. So you know that should be the outcome. We always, um, when I create curriculum, there's always a take action component at the end of each unit. So how are the kids going to apply this learning? It's not just about absorbing this knowledge, but what, what do does do it look that? like in practice? How do you apply this? And this mm -hmm. is as early as kindergarten. Yes, it is. Um, yeah. So like for example, one of the kindergarten units is around ornithologists, and again, using the career language, the, the strategies and tools and language of the discipline <coughs> profession are important. So our kindergartners worked alongside the Audubon Society and studied the birds in our school habitat and looked at how often, and they actually did ethnographic studies yeah, with sure. um, tally marks of how yeah. often they saw yeah. birds doing certain behaviors. Yeah. And they observed birds in the classroom and outside the classroom. They did an entire bird book um, where they labeled all of the parts. So that was their ELA component. Very cross-curricular. Very cross-curricular. And immersive. Yeah. Um, and what was amazing is through their study, they found that there's really no water available for birds. And they realized that was an essential part of the bird's life. Wow. So they actually, their take action was to raise money for a bird bath that they can then put in our schoolyard oh, for the birds. Wonderful. So kind of bringing it all back around. It totally that is. That is wonderful. What a canine experience. And yes. the Audubon Society in Rhode Island is amazing. Yes. They yeah. will come right into school and they'll let you on their land. It's wonderful. Absolutely. I actually find that community, our community is, especially in Rhode Island, I don't know if it's that we're small. We're very small. But <laughs> it's, everyone is so, they're, they're willing to help. They want right. to be there. They want to be a part of this work. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's been truly yeah. amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not in like a silo, <laughs> this is mine. It's like, no, come see, come be part of it, learn about it. Yes. But I think we all know if we work together, you get so right. much more synergy, right? One a lot of times you just need that connection, and um, it's been really exciting in this organization making that connection between mm -hmm. industry, education, mm -hmm. and nonprofit. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. I think it's the way it should have always been. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. It makes it so much easier. Mm -hmm. Now, you do workforce development. Oh, no, you, well, you, fund our, you do yeah. them. I do, do development, yes, yeah. I do fundraising. Development. Development. I thought you meant, do Sorry, we no, do it as an organization? Yeah, I was yes. like, yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, yeah. I personally handle um, fundraising, development, and events as well. Um, so we have a couple of events coming up that oh, we're wow. looking for some sponsors for. Um, we do something called STEM Talks, mm -hmm. which we had one in December for educators and more adult-centered. Mm -hmm. And speaking about the Marine, we had um, the Rhode Island Teacher of the Year, Charlene Tuttle, came in and gave a speech to our uh, audience and oh, one thing wonderful. one of the things that she does great with her students is she takes them out to the water and they're middle school age so they're yeah. able to really mm -hmm. you know understand mm -hmm. and engage and self-regulate so it was great having mm -hmm. her come in to speak to our audience we have two more this year they're both um, student-based one is going to be next month at New England Tech mm -hmm. we're going to have 140 students from Rhode Island come in That's and wonderful. hear um, speakers and then we're going to have a larger conference on May 4th and the great thing about the programming is we have young speakers. We have college-age folks. Oh, so wonderful. So they can relate to them a little bit. They can relate to them. Yeah. They can yeah. talk about their experience as high school and college students. They're all in STEM uh, careers or studying STEM. Mm -hmm. um, it's great for us to talk to the students, but when they have a peer, mm -hmm. it's that much more impactful. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we also have a golf tournament coming up in June. Oh, my God. So you guys are busy. Very, mm -hmm. very, very busy. Um, now, is the... Um, once for the students, is it open to anyone? Is it public open or do you have to apply? 
So it's invite only as of right now. Right. Um, again, we are still very new. We've only been established since 2017. You've done a lot in two we've, years. We've done a lot, yes, <laughs> yeah. we've done a lot. And we have a very small, what I call a small but mighty team. Yes, um, definitely. So we, we get a lot done with, with very few hands on deck. But we also have really great committees and volunteers that we work with as well. But we, we're doing the um, events invite only right now. Mm -hmm. We're hoping to open it up at some point. Wow. Yeah, and another piece of why it's in the STEM Talks is invite only is our focus is to increase underrepresented populations in okay. STEM workforce. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, a huge piece of is exposure and role models. Yeah. So all of our speakers are from underrepresented populations. That's wonderful. Um, speaking to the audience of underrepresented populations in STEM so that it gives the students, they can visualize themselves in these careers and see that it is, you know, that Absolutely. it's a possibility for yeah. themselves. That Absolutely. is wonderful. Wow. That's very cool. So from a fundraiser perspective, mm -hmm. tell us a couple of the hurdles that is to go to do a fundraiser. You make it sound yeah. so simple and easy and flow. <laughs> well, but for the viewing audience, tell them a couple of hurdles you got over to beat this level on fundraising. That's a lot of fundraising. There's, I'm, I'm impressed. There's always hurdles in fundraising. Yeah, thank and you. And my background is actually not in education. I come from uh, media sales. Okay. All so right. more recently, I worked at um, a daily newspaper here in Rhode Island mm -hmm. um, in the sales department. And my approach to sales or fundraising or anything is really a relationship-based model. Relationship-based, And absolutely. a lot of people are fear fundraising because of the nature of what you're doing. You're asking people for yes. money. Yeah, um, I'm one of those people. But <laughs> <laughs> That's why I brought up I want yeah, Amy to I'm hear like, this part. <laughs> but we're, like, we're all fundraisers, we're all sellers, we all talk passionately about what we do, whether you're at the, whether you're in fundraising or you're in another part yeah. of your organization, mm -hmm. we're all sort of selling what we do. We're all passionate about what we do and yeah. always looking for opportunities. So that's basically what fundraising is. Mm -hmm. um, on the event side, you also have this challenge of giving your participants a really worthwhile experience. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Um, For me personally, that is more challenging for me than the ask part oh. um, because that's the more detailed part. That's the experience. And a lot of times when you're with a newer organization like we are, folks think of your organization as you. They don't have a ton of history. So a lot of times it. it is a conversation they have with Erin or myself and one of our other staff members. Sure. So when you just bring it back to that relationship base, mm -hmm. it, it takes some of that fear out of it. Yeah. And also kind of off topic, but similar to being here today, when you do public speaking, I always tell myself I'm amongst friends, oh, and that kind of takes some of that fear out. So this morning, being a little nervous, being yeah. here, I'm telling myself oh, I'm amongst friends. So absolutely. That's absolutely. Yeah. I like that the way you switch your mindset. Yeah. You have to. Because if you, not, you like I'd be like, ah. When you think <laughs> numbers and everything that we need to make this programming happen, it's daunting and it's very intimidating. And then you have to communicate that um, you know, to your volunteers and to your committee, and that can sound daunting to them mm -hmm. as well. So you really have to make it so it's palatable and it's not as daunting as these big goals that we have. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Well, I'm going to share something with you. It's 45 years old that just you just pulled it out of me. You just totally framed me on being friends. And I'm like, yeah, we're definitely friends. Right. I, I totally. However, when I took my first course in public speaking and community and fundraising, whole bit, my professor taught me to look at people and put, and this is what I've been doing until today. You just changed me. <laughs> the, look at the people. The underwear thing? Yeah, to pretend yeah. they're sitting on a toilet in their underwear. Yes. And I have had that in my head for 40 some years, and you just changed me. I've heard We're that one friends. as well, and I could not. I, can't. I, don't, I don't know if I can really make that work right. all the time. I tell it while it's <laughs> been in my head, but you have just recently got the Yeah, I feel like we. I think I do a shot, really. Yeah. I'm oh. going to totally take everyone off the toilet. No more toilet training. No. Maybe that's in my early childhood toilet training, you know what I'm saying? However, I'm combining that. But I'm going to just say everyone here is my friend. We're amongst friends. Because we all really, at the end of the day, we do want to help each other, we want to work together. Yes. Great concept. Yes, yeah. I truly believe I people it. ultimately want to help each other. Oh, mm -hmm. by far. We have like five minutes left, so how do you balance it all? How do you balance it all? Do you balance it all? <laughs> and can you balance it all? Honestly, Rashawn mentioned it. We have an amazing team. Oh, we, we really do have an yeah. amazing, amazing team. I hear uh, we balance each other out, mm -hmm. oh, wow. and that's pretty much how we balance our work. Wow. <laughs> um, we have very unique skill sets, each one of us. Um, and the reason we've been able to accomplish what we've accomplished and that we're being as successful as we are is because of our team. That's wonderful. That's a great statement. We balance yeah. each other out. Yeah. I can just see the team working together when you know someone a little bit more over here, a little less here. Mm -hmm. right. You feel it and you balance it. That's wonderful. It's really, that's a, that's a family team. We yeah, are. We are. Absolutely. <laughs> I felt How that. big is your team? Uh, we have six of us. Well, and, and we're really growing, so I'm right. actually doing our budget. We're going to be right. adding some people. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Now, what is your ultimate um, 
goal? Like, do you have a strategic plan of where you want to be in like five years from now, or how big you want to be, or? In terms of that, no. Mm -hmm. uh, all of our strategic plan that we have is all project based mm -hmm. and oriented in terms of accomplishing our mission. Right. Um, so, and in, in, we'll grow to whatever size we need to in order to accomplish that mission. That yeah. is, and what is the mission? Um, so, our mission is really around uh, transforming the community through education, mm -hmm. uh, really with a focus on workforce development and of using utilizing adult of all learners. That's great. Um, because that's really important. It, adult learners are really important. K-12 is also really important. Mm -hmm. And so being able to focus everyone and make sure everyone can change that trajectory of their lives if needed is, mm -hmm. that's what we're that's, working towards. That's great. I, mm -hmm. I think you guys are going to do very well. Thank workforce you. development is huge and so needed, especially right now. So I think you hit it right on. I think you'll be, be very successful long term. Thank you. We're yeah. hoping so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So, Anything you'd like to add before we end? Um, we're, January 2019, we're going to be adding a quote to the end of our show, but anything our guests would like to add before we end? Any? My personal, we're talking about quotes. Yeah. This has been the quote that's probably been in my um, signature line since I started education years and years and years ago. But it's Martin Luther King's quote, ironically, perfect timing too. Yes, right? it is. <laughs> um, but is you know the the purpose of education is intelligence plus character, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I think oftentimes that gets lost in the testing mm -hmm. aspect of our yes. education. Yeah. And just... so really remembering that our students are are humans, and are, whether they're adult learners or young learners, um, that we need to really focus on the whole human being. Mm -hmm. Lifetime learners. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You want to add anything? People want more information. They can um, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Oh, you guys are all on social media. Oh, yeah. I think I covered them. Maybe all. eventually we're going to do a podcast together. Yes, yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to make that we one of our projects, to... right? <laughs> Absolutely. Sail fast, come around. That's a great idea, really. So, uh, women's business is ending in a quote as of January 2019, and the quote today is from Melinda Gates: "I'm wholehearted about whatever I do. If you are successful." It is because somewhere, sometime, someone gave you a life or an idea and started you in the right direction. Remember also that you are indebted to life until you help some less fortunate person just as you were helped. Mm -hmm. That kind of way like put this all together, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, it's cool. Especially educators and teachers, yeah. we do that every single day. We as a company do that every single day. Mm -hmm. The part that you said about balancing each other, yeah. wow, that went right straight to my heart. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you for having us. Thank oh, thank you, you for being on the show. show. <laughs> Great show.